there's nothing worse than coming out and seeing little itty bitty teeny weeny aphids on your plant and one turns into a thousand but luckily they're pretty easy to get rid of and today we're going to go over three ways that i use to get rid of them and then a bonus fourth so uh let's check it out So this is my milkweed and I came out one day and I saw these little yellow bugs and I usually get green aphids, just your, you know, your standard aphids, but these happen to be um, what I've deduced to be oleander aphids, which is a really common pest for these, but this is going to work for any aphid that you have. And the first thing that I do is I come through and I just squish them. You know, I just go through and I'll hand pick. That's always my first line of defense. And hand picking is always a good thing to do because it's non-invasive, it doesn't hurt anything. You don't have to worry about it affecting any other animals or anything like that. Best of all, it's free. Now it can be a little icky, but that's okay. You'll uh, you'll get used to it after a while and you can always just get a little like a little rubber glove or something if it's too icky for you. So let's see the second method. This is my little potting area slash outside work area for this stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up with water and then we're gonna add dish soap, okay? And I don't really have a decent measurement for it. Um, let's see if I can do this one-handed. What I do is I fill it about halfway up because once I give it a little shake, it'll foam up and I don't really want to have all that foam in there. So I'll fill it about halfway and then I just take and I give it a good, I'd say maybe a tablespoon or so of soap. And what this does, if you've ever used dish soap, then you know that it'll dry out your hands and it does the same thing to the aphid, it desiccates the skin. So um, it'll kind of break through that layer and then really what it does is it dries them out. And I'll take this and we just spray it on. And when you treat stuff, it's important that you squirt the bottom and the tops. And get all the way down. All the way down. You want to cover the whole plant. Because you also don't know if there are eggs anywhere too, so you want to get those. One thing I forgot to say is a lot of times you'll see people say, or you'll hear people so you won't see them, You'll hear them say, spray with water, a strong stream of water, and it'll knock them down. And that does help because really an aphid is too weak to climb back up the plant. But instead of doing that, I go ahead and hit them with the soap in that hard stream, and then that will knock them down. So not only does it knock them down, but it'll also desiccate them as well. Because, I mean, after all, I don't want them coming back, and I want the best chance possible. So let's go ahead and get rid of them the first time. And then if that doesn't work, then we go to this method. This method is simply using neem oil spray. So what I do is I take a sprayer. I have this pump sprayer here. And a lot of times people look at this and like, oh, it's not organic what you're using because of the sprayer. And it's totally organic. Uh, neem comes from a tree. And I use, for a gallon of water, I use, and you can always just refer back to the, the directions on the neem. Um, let's see. Two teaspoons a gallon. So I usually do about a half a tablespoon. And then on top of that, I also use the dish soap again. And what that does is, because neem oil is an oil, the dish soap will help disperse it. And then not only does the neem, will, when it gets on the plants, it makes the animals not want to eat it. And then they will in turn die. But then the soap is actually a one-two punch. So then it comes back and it will you know, it'll desiccate them as well. So you're starving them out and you're desiccating them. And it's really simple. Um, these sprayers are so cheap. They're like 20 bucks maybe. No, I think I got this one for $10 for a one gallon sprayer. And I use um, neem bliss oil. And this is cold pressed neem oil. So the difference between that and some stuff like you can get in like Lowe's or whatnot is <clears throat> it, it has to be warm over 80 degrees before it turns into an oil, a pourable oil. Otherwise it solidifies kind of like a, uh, kind of like 
a fat or something like that. So we just take it and we're pouring it. You know, I keep an extra tablespoon measuring spoon out here and then I come back, give it a nice squirt and then we fill it up and we use it. And let's get some water in this so we can get these uh, things going because I don't want my milkweed to perish from aphids. See, this spray too is good for a lot of things. Um, anything that kind of chews on leaves, this is a good maintenance spray. So I use this a lot for, um, I use it for my grasshoppers sometimes when they get real bad. I use it for aphids, obviously. Um, Japanese beetles I use just to try. Um, flea beetles, all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty simple. But once you pump it up, you want to have it on a fine mist. So it gives it a nice mist. You just want to coat, coat the whole plant. So the fourth way, which I don't personally use, but is definitely possible, is to buy ladybugs or praying mantises and release them into your garden. Uh, the only reason why I don't do that is because I feel like when you do that, it's really a waste and you can attract those animals into your garden by planting the correct things. Uh, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing an aphid outbreak on one of your plants and then a couple days later, here come the ladybugs. And I always wait to kind of see if they move in because typically they do and it seems to be more so in the spring. And since we're closer to fall right now, I, have, I don't see that as much. But I mean, I see lizards move in and stuff like that, and they eat all that stuff. So it kind of, it helps that way. But you have to do this in the right intervals too. And that's really important. Really, anytime you're treating something, you want to know how long it takes for its life cycle. And when I say life cycle, I mean from the time it is born to the time that it mates, and then when it lays eggs and when it dies. And what you want to do is you want to get in between that egg cycle. So for aphids, I usually spray about every five to seven days. And I usually do three treatments at minimum. So the first treatment wipes out everything. Then the second treatment will come in and get the eggs. And then the third treatment will come back and get everything that I may have missed. And then if I do still see more, then I'll go for a fourth treatment. And that's just kind of just clean in house. And I mean, that's just kind of, once you get an outbreak, you gotta stay on top of it because they will come back and they will reproduce. And you saw how bad the aphids were on there. And I mean, they just suck the plant dry. But once you get a hang of it, it's not that bad to get rid of. I don't dread it as much as I used to. So, um, you know, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this, you can check out the Backyard Gardens podcast. We have new episodes twice a week. And um, subscribe, give us a like, share this video around. Uh, we're doing more. We've got the Fall Garden series going on, so link is up here. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. See ya.